So this is the circuit board that I use. It's uh, fiberglass with copper clad circuit board, but the copper is treated with a photo resist light sensitive material, so we can actually use it for developing on the UV light. So to get the artwork onto the circuit board, you have to print it out on, this is actually special paper that um, I buy from Rapid it is quite expensive, it's like a really thick tracing paper and I use a laser printer I have uh, read online people have had some success with using an inkjet printer I've never tried an inkjet printer so I don't know how successful it would be but uh, with a laser printer it works quite well If you don't want to get hold of this um, it is expensive and it's it's a big batch um, if you're only doing a few circuit boards and um, try and get the thickest tracing paper you can or get these laser overhead clear acetates for overhead projectors and you can print onto that and it does uh, work quite well as well is a lot cheaper than buying this stuff so uh, I think you can get a box of this for about a fiver from Staples so it's a cheaper way of doing it other than that try and get the thickest tracing paper you possibly can and also another method that I use from time to time is I've um, got some normal copper clad circuit board here and um, it's got no photo resist on it obviously but um, instead of using prototyping board like this what I quite often do is um, if I've designed something on the breadboard is I'll get a permanent marker and I'll actually draw directly onto uh, the copper board or I do it in pencil first and then go over it with a permanent marker and get some really thin I got some from um, an art shop some really thin permanent markers uh, a lot thinner than this and um, you uh, draw out your artwork with the permanent marker and you can actually then put that straight into the etch tank and the permanent ink will protect the copper underneath while it etches away any exposed copper it's um, a really good way of doing it it's not as neat as uh, using uh, artwork but um, I find it a lot better than using prototyping board it's just a personal choice this is my light box that I made, it's uh, made out of an old drill case and uh, if we open it up what I did it's really simple, put some foam here to uh, make a good seal when I put the um, PCB on there this is just plexiglass that I cut out cut a hole where the handle goes and I masked off with some vinyl um, the parts that I didn't want light escaping through the uh, lights that I used inside are actually replacement lights from Rapid Electronics that they provide for their light boxes so I used those so I knew I always have a supply of lights when I need them because they do wear out after time and uh, it's just simple from an hardware store fluorescent lighting transformer and starters in there the only thing that uh, I didn't do with this and I wish I had and I will get round to it one day is I never put a timer on it I've just got a uh, electric cable coming in the side there and there's no timer on it so I have to use a separate timer so I've now cut myself a piece of circuit board to the uh, size of the artwork and I have left a little bit round the sides um, you're better off doing that like I said because light can escape in at the sides and uh, then it's no good uh, the artwork won't expose on it I also and cut this out leave a little bit extra here so you can maneuver it underneath because that will go like that in the light box you can get it into position and move it underneath if you cut it right up to the edge you've got nothing to hold on to to get it into position so peel back this tape it underneath and you can see it's got a green kind of tint to it that is the uh, photoresist material on that copper there as you can see 
like I say it escapes in from the sides this one and this one so uh, always cut it a little bit bigger than your artwork so the artwork goes on make sure you get it the right way around because it's a negative print so the uh, best way to remember is the side the ink's on that's the side and that goes on top of the uh, PCB there let's line that up how I like it there and if you notice I haven't turned my light box on yet because that strong UV light can attack it's not attacking this um, photo resist material a lot quicker than uh, the actual lights in the uh, workshop here can so I always turn that on when I've got it in place so I'm happy with that and down there place it in the middle So this is the circuit board that's just come out of the light box now, it's been developed for three minutes and hopefully on the camera you can just see some very faint yellow marks where uh, the actual artwork is that um, we're wanting to capture and uh, develop and the only thing I can best describe it as it's um, very similar to when you want to come and decorate your room and it's been a couple of years and you take a picture down off the wall and behind that picture there's a darker shape outline of uh, where that picture was it's very similar to that so now we start to um, use chemicals so you want to make sure you've got some old clothes on or a protective coat of some sort and uh, use some rubber gloves because um, although especially the ferric chloride you might have seen some videos on uh, YouTube where they say it's acid and it burns through your skin and it's not it's more of a an irritant than it is uh, anything else and it does stain stains really really bad if you do get it on your hands just wash it off with some water straight away and you shouldn't have any problems so um, what we're going to do now we're going to develop um, the uh, artwork on the PCB and what we've got in here is um, some developing solution and I bought this from Rapid you get a litre for about eight pounds I think and it's um, sodium or potassium carbonate solution um, the potassium carbonate has been reported to give better results and this is potassium carbonate solution and a litre will last you a hell of a long time you dilute it to one parts developing solution to nine parts water and if you keep it in a tub like this what I'll do when I finish with this is just put the lid back on this put it to one side and it will keep keep like that for about four to six weeks if not longer and it'll still develop boards and um, if you're doing a lot of boards and um, you will see this solution start to turn a greeny color from all the ink and um, when it does get really dark and that's the time to change it because you start getting lines on your board and it won't develop properly a lot of people also try to use um, caustic soda which is sodium hydroxide you want to stay away from that um, you never know buying the over counter caustic soda how strong it is and it it's, can be a really strong solution doesn't develop all that well it can even strip your board and you can waste more money on uh, scrap circuit boards all the time because uh, circuit board is expensive and um, the money you'd save using caustic soda so stay well away from that so what we're going to do now I'm going to pop it in the developing solution here at the side I've also got a little tub of water so we can rinse it off afterwards and while it's in there I'll just move it backwards and forwards over the artwork So what we'll do now is take that out and transfer it to the water. 
wash it off don't need anything like distilled water, tap water is fine ready to be etched so there it is bubbling away in the ferric chloride and etching it should only take about six to eight minutes um, the ferric chloride itself you have to dilute that with water as well uh, 70 percent ferric chloride to 30 percent water and if you want to know how to make this etching tank then uh, check out my last video so here is one of the finished boards I've just gone in tidied the sides up and uh, it's ready for drilling and also this one that didn't come out that well and the reason I think that didn't come out too well is because of the studio lights in here interfered with it so I'm gonna have to do that one again so just a warning of how sensitive these boards are so all that's left now is the boring bit of drilling out all the holes on the PCB and I'm sure you don't want to watch this so I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time